Hey Booktube, this is Love Me or Leave Me, Episode 5. I'm Jen, and I usually am talking about audiobooks, but today I'm going to do Episode 5 of Love Me or Leave Me. This was a series that was started, this is a series, that was started by Lisa at Books and Smiles. And uh, it is a combination uh, bookshelf tour and unhaul. And for me, this is round five. Uh, I'm going down shelf by shelf just to, um, you know, go through and get rid of the books that I just don't need to have anymore. I have so many, and it's, it's just gotten out of control. So, yeah, normally I'm really ruthless. I'm not feeling very much like I'm not, I'm not in that great of a ruthless mood today. So we'll see how this goes. So today I'm just going to do this shelf right here. And okay, so book one, A Great Kisser. This is by Donna Kaufman and I'm keeping this because when I bought it, I, I saw the title and I thought, how can I pass up a book that's called A Great Kisser? It's just um, adult chiclet. And the book was okay. It wasn't all, all that great. Um, but, you know, I just, I, I'm keeping it for sentimental reasons. So that's going to stay. Teardrop by Lauren Kate is the first in a YA trilogy, I think, about a girl who um, can control water. Or maybe she can't at first, and then she has to learn to, or I don't know, something like that. Water self, does that sound right? Anyway, I've tried to listen to it on audio and I got distracted and I wasn't all that pleased with it, but I don't know. It's a nice hardback copy, so I don't know about this one. I think maybe I'll put it in the maybe pile. Um, I'll put that there. That way, if I listen to it and I don't like it and I don't think I need to own the series, then I'll get rid of it then. Truth by Julia Carr is the sequel to 16. I think that's what you would call it. It's XVI. Now this premise, it's a YA dystopian, and this premise has always looked good to me. And I don't have the first book, but I do want to read it. Yeah, I think I'm going to hang on to this one because I do, I like the idea. I like the idea. Okay. Oh, these two go together. Juliet Immortal and Romeo Redeemed. These are by Stacy J. Uh, two formats, beautiful hardback, paperback. I hate that. But I th think I want to keep these because I want to read them. I think that these are available on audio. I'm not positive, but um, okay. So this is the first book, and then this is the second book. They have a paranormal aspect to them, um, it's Romeo and Juliet, you know, so it's not that I'm a sucker for that, but I still think I want to read them. And if I love them, then I will probably get rid of this and get a hardback copy. But yeah, I'll keep them for now. Uh -huh. Lucky number four by Amanda Jason. This I got at Utopia the year I went there. It's a couple, three, four years ago now. Uh, I think three years ago. And it's signed. And I've always wanted to read it. It's about a girl who has to uh, move in with four guys. And it just looks really good. And it's not on audio because it's self-published. And in fact, Amanda Jason is uh, a woman and her son. Um, and I think that Amanda and Jason are the names that she had picked out for her children or something like that. I don't know. But anyway, it just looks good. I don't know if it is good. I haven't looked it up on Goodreads, but I just thought it looked cute. So I really do want to read that. The Wishing Season by Denise Hunter is a Chapel Springs romance. Now this is Christian fiction and lately I've had good results with Christian fiction and the premise on this sounds really cute. It is about uh, PJ McKinley and her dream of opening her own restaurant and then Cole Evans is a contractor who uh, wants to open a home for foster kids. And so they both see this property that they like and there is an eccentric philanthropist that, o that owns it. And when this person weighs the proposal, she proposes an outlandish tiebreaker. They have to share the house for a year to see which idea works best. So 
should be interesting. It sounds like a really cute story. And I've read, I think, one other book by Denise Hunter, but that's it. So I'm going to give this one to try. When She Woke, Woke by Hilary Jordan is a book that I got at an independent bookstore after talking with the owner about Margaret Atwood and The Handmaid's Tale. And she said this was some uh, kind of similar and... Uh, I don't know. It's adult sci-fi. And the thing is, I've had this for so long that if I was going to read it, I really should have read it by now. Um, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. You know what? I think I'm going to hang on to it and listen to it. And then if I don't like it, then I'll get rid of it then. Man, I'm not getting rid of very many here, am I? Enter title here by Rahul Kanakak Kanak Kanakia. <laughs> And I got this as an ARC at BookCon a couple of years ago, and I just don't, I don't have any interest in this, really. Um, this is about a girl who finds, who, she's an overachiever in high school, and she gets a literary agent and has to write a story. And so she decides that she needs to have uh, the typical life of an American girl in order to write the story. So it's about that. So, no, pass that along to someone else. Never Let Me Go by Kazuo Ishiguro. This, a lot of people love this. And, you know, this is the movie tie-in cover. Uh, I tried to read this, and I just couldn't do it. So, yeah, no. And last one in that little pocket. Rosebush by Michelle Jaffe. And this is about a girl who wakes up one night in a rosebush. And I think it's got something to do with somebody hiding... I don't know if she's a suspect in a murder or something. I don't know. But, yeah, no. <laughs> I don't know what possessed me to buy that in the first place. I'm not a fan of YA mystery, so, nah, I'll pass on that one. Mm. Boy, that's in there tightly. Butterman Time Travel by P.K. Hrezo is another book that I got at um, Utopia. <laughs> How do you say it? Utopia. It's got a cute little um, bookmark. And there is a sequel. This I didn't think was all that great, honestly. It's about a girl who um, runs a time travel travel agency in Alaska in the future. And so she takes this guy on a, I don't know, a trip and things go wrong. And they go back to Woodstock in the 1960s and the New York club scene. I think in the future or something. I don't know. It was okay. I didn't love it, but I, I don't know. I, it's kind of a cool looking book and I think it's time travel and I just don't want to get rid of it quite yet. Do I have to have a reason? I don't think so. Okay. The Secret Year by Jennifer R. Hubbard. This is a good book. This is YA contemporary and it's about a boy and a girl who have a relationship, but it's secret. And, um, then she's killed in a car accident. And so he has to get over her, but nobody knows that they were involved. And so it's an interesting take on that. And I really liked it. I like Jennifer R. Hubbard, and it seems like I have more of her books, but um, yeah, I don't need to keep this, but I do think it's a good story. So probably highly underrated. Yeah, so that can go somewhere else. Oh yeah. <laughs> Jennifer R. Hubbard, Try Not to Breathe. Well, obviously, I liked that book, and I've never read this one, so I, I'm going to keep this one. Uh, this is, um, it says, it's hard to read. I don't know what it's about. Um, it's, oh, it's something. 16-year-old Ryan is fresh out of a mental hospital and trying to figure out how to reboot his life after a suicide attempt. So that should be interesting. Mental health, kids' mental health. Hmm. Shift by Hugh Howey is something that I bought because I thought, uh, I hear people rave about this, and I don't know anything about it. Um, I can't remember if this is the start of a series or if it's the second. It's an omnibus, so it's a story that was told, an episodic story, I think, that was told online and then was released as a book. It got picked up picked up by a publisher, or maybe it was self-published. I'm not sure. Anyway, um, I think I'm going to hang on to this. It's adult uh, dystopia, or post-apocalyptic, because it's about life in a silo after the world ended, or something like that. 
I don't know. I'm going to hang on to that. The Unbecoming of Mara Dyer. Now this I'm going to keep. This is by Michelle Hodkin. And I'm going to keep this because I want the whole series. I loved this. It was just so wacko out there that I thought, what? <laughs> when I read it. And I loved that. The way it starts and the way it ends, the trilogy, is it's it's a wild ride. So yeah, I'm going to hang on to that. Yeah, I listened to this on audio for a little while and I hated it. Hated it so much. So yeah, if you're going to read it, I would read it in print. But yeah, I'm going to hang on to this. So it's going to go right there. Here on Earth by Alice Hoffman is a book that I found at Goodwill. And it's Alice Hoffman. And I don't need to own this. I don't I just don't need to. I don't need to own everything that Alice Hoffman has written. I do like her books, but I don't need to. I need to read them and then decide if I want them or not. Alice Hoffman, Blue Diary. Same thing. Yeah. Uh, okay. No. <laughs> I don't need to own that. The Museum of Extraordinary Things. Now this, actually I bought it. I, I buddy read it with Elena from Elena Reads Books. And then I sent it to her, not realizing that she already had a copy. Duh, where, where was my brain? So I picked it up again, and I think I will hang on to this. I think I will. It was an interesting book. I didn't love it, but it was interesting. So yeah, I'm going to hang on to that. I'm running out of space here. The Cupcake Queen by Heather Hepler is YA um, contemporary. It's very cute. It's a it's a good winter read. And it was very sweet, cute, uh, kind of run-of-the-mill, about a three-star book. And I picked it up because who could resist these cupcakes and that title? So, yeah, I'm going to pass that along just because I don't need to own it, but it was very cute. Unearthly and Hallowed, these are the UK covers of the Hallow or the um, Unearthly series by Cynthia Hand. I love this series, I really do. But I only have these two in the UK covers, but I'm not going to get rid of them because they're the UK covers. All I need to do is order the third book and then I'll have a set. And I actually have this in the U US, how you, how you say US covers. <laughs> So, yeah, I'm going to hang on to those. Okay, last little bit. Landry Park. This is by Bethany Hagen. And this is, I think this is dystopian about rich people in the future. <laughs> Something having to do with who's going to marry who and all kinds of things like that. It's on audio, so I don't know. I, I hear good things about it, so... I don't know. I, if I'm going to read it, it's going to be on audio. So I don't know that I need to hang on to this. Actually, this is like teardrop. It's like, what if I like it? What if I really like it and want to own it? So I think I'll put it in the maybe pile. The Curious Incident of the Dog in the Nighttime by Mark Haddon. This I hear is really good. It's about a boy who is autistic and even at that, it's not the kind of book that I would read. It's literary fiction, and it's just not my thing. It seemed like a good idea at the time, but I think I found it at Goodwill, but no. Dearly Departed by Leah Habel. Habel. This is really cute. I, I think I listened to it, but it's about zombies. It's about a very far in the future dystopia where everything has gone back to the Victorian age. It's like, I don't know, 500 years in the future. And it's so cute. Um, this girl, her dad is a scientist, and he figures out how to reanimate dead people. So he turns them into soldiers. So the main character falls in love with one of them, and it's a cute romance, and I never did read the sequel. I think it was initially supposed to be a trilogy, but the author... I don't know, her life went off a different direction, I think. So I never did read the sequel. And it's really cute. Um, I don't know. I, I think I'm going to put this in the maybe pile. And see, I feel that way about a lot of these YA dystopians. I don't, I don't know. We'll see. That had a lot going on. Uh, it, like the plot was all over the place uh, with regard to bad guys and bad things happening and the love story and all that kind of thing. Even Adam, this is by 
Michael Grant and Catherine Applegate. It is a very cute story about an android and a girl and she creates him and so he's supposed to be perfect and so uh, it's about that. It's about is he the perfect guy for her or not and it's really cute. The reason I read this was because it was narrated on audio by Jenna Lamia and she's my absolute favorite female author or narrator of all time. Um, it was a cute story and um, I would listen to it again, but I really don't need to own it. <laughs> I just don't need to. The Lost Sun. Uh, this is book one in the United States of Asgard. I tried to listen to this, and I just lost all interest. It's um, it's in a an alternate United States where the Norse gods are all in control, and... I don't know, something happens. One of them goes missing or something. I can't remember now, but anyway, I don't know. I wasn't that interested. It was, I, yeah. One of those YA things that I just didn't care about. Still Alice by Lisa Genova. My mom told me I need to read this because she said it's really good. It's about a woman who has Alzheimer's and her descent into that. And I do think that it's probably a really good book. And so I think I'm going to hang on to this one. I probably can listen to it, and of course there's a movie, but um, yeah, I'm going to hang on to this one. Let's see, where should I put this? R2, I love you, but you got to move. The Magician King by Lev Grossman. Now this is another one that I found at Goodwill thinking, oh, that's part of that series, and it's, you know, I hear really good things. I'm never going to read this. Um, I would watch the television show, but I, I don't care about the book. I don't. Not my thing. Not my thing. The Elegant Universe by Brian Greene. This I'm hanging on to because I love books like this. This is uh, less of a textbook and more of a, um, it's nonfiction and it's all about quantum theory, quantum theory and that kind of stuff, you know. Super strings, hidden dimensions, and the quest for the ultimate theory. So uh, Brian Greene is a physicist who's very popular, and he makes everything very understandable. And I love this kind of stuff, so I'm hanging on to that. Revel by Marissa Gibord. Have no idea about this. It's just a really pretty cover. It says, to survive on Trespass Island, sacrifices must be made. I don't know if it's a trilogy or what. I'm going to hang on to this until I find out what it's about. I have no idea. I think maybe I got it on Book Outlet, thinking it was pretty and it sounded good. I don't know. It's YA, so who knows. But I'll hang on to it until I um, decide. And lastly, the uh, Lost, not the, but just Lost Stars. This is one of the Star Wars episodes that is, I believe this is canon, um, but I'm not sure. I don't know. It's by Claudia Gray, and a lot of authors have been writing episodes of Star Wars, and I did try and listen to this on audio, and it's so well done. It's narrated by January Lavoie, and all of the sound effects are in it, like you hear R2, and you hear Darth Vader, and all of them, but um, I don't know. I'm, I'm going to hang on to it just because... If for no other reason, it's part of my Star Wars stuff. I'm a huge Star Wars geek, so I think I'm going to hang on to it for that reason. Also, my daughter, uh, Jenna, got me this for Christmas one year, and so that, that sentimental value, if nothing else, so I'm going to hang on to it. That is that shelf. Yeah, Making such progress. Now, in this one, I think I kept more of the shelf than I got rid of, but I don't know. I don't know, maybe it was about half and half, but I feel pretty good about it. And if you disagree with me and say, you cannot get rid of that book, you cannot get rid of that book, you have to read it, then let me know. And especially these ones that I'm iffy about, um, like Revel and Landry Park and Teardrop. If you've read any of these, let me know. Let me know what you thought of them. That is it for episode five, and uh, I will see you next time. Thanks for watching. Thank you.